Aaron Hernandez, the demons inside of Aaron Hernandez, child abuse and brain trauma. In a small short video. As you watch his documentary, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. But the one part that a lot of people are glossing over is child abuse at the age of six years old. When you're that young in age, you're just getting developed in life. And when a nasty, disgusting beast rapes a child at six years old, that child, if he or she has any type of even the remote type of pleasure when that happens, his brain automatically associates the dopamine and everything with that reward system and that pleasure. So that's why you see that a lot of people that are raped when they're younger a lot of sodomites, a lot of individuals that are homosexuals have been molested when they're young, yet they end up being homosexuals. A lot of young girls that are molested by their uncles, by their daddies, by their cousins, they end up being very promiscuous as well. Aside from the damage that happens to that person from child abuse, because that alone is demolishing what people don't realize is, is that there's a transference happening. When a man lays with a woman and a woman lays with a man, I hope you understand that this changes the DNA of the woman. It does. Studies have shown it. But there's something bigger happening and that is a transferring of something that can occur if both are not in one union in marriage. Demons can flow. Principalities can flow. Oppression can flow. And when you have a person that's possessed enough to rape a child, can you imagine the demons and the bondages can be, that can be transferred into that person? Ephesians 6.12 We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So as that person grows up, and that person comes to Jesus Christ and Christ delivers them and sets them free. For example, have you not noticed in your life that after you backslide the first time, every time you backslide, it becomes harder and harder and harder to come back? Read Matthew 12, 43 to 45. If you came to listen to Joel Osteen while watching this video to tell you that everything's okay, that you can sin all you want, that you can act the way you want every single day, that you can do what you want and there's not going to be any consequences, I'm sorry, you came to the wrong video. That is a lie. There are consequences to our decisions. Here it speaks of a person. An example. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Right? He walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. So whenever you come to Christ. If you had any type of possession inside of you. And I'm going to tell you today. When you go to your workplace. You're walking in a place full of people with demons. When you go outside in public, in the mall, at a theme park, there are people walking around you with legions of demons. This is why we're not to take it personal when someone lashes out of us. Ephesians 6.12, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but there are people demonically possessed every single day around us. Anyhow, when you come to Christ, that spirit leaves. But that spirit is still looking out for you because it says, Then he saith, then the spirit says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. So when you come to Christ and Christ delivers you, right? And awesome. God has saved me. I'm back on track. I'm seeking Jesus. I'm doing the right thing. If you decide to backslide, those spirits that left, they're going to come back. But they're not coming back by themselves. Okay? And when they come back, they find the house empty, swept, garnished, clean, perfectly fine. Because Christ has set you free and delivered you. Then, he, then goeth he, the demon, the spirit, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. I ask again, have you not noticed in your life that every time you backslide and walk away from God, it's harder to come back to God? And then you come back to God and God delivers you and you feel complete freedom and you feel free from pornography. You feel free from lust, free from all of these thoughts. Then one day you're bored and you say, I can just go with that temptation for two or three minutes and you fall again. And now you're not dealing with the demons you had before. Now you're dealing with seven times more powerful 
legions of demons. When you understand the, the depth of the demonic realm, then you can understand the depth of the damage that Aaron Hernandez went through when he was just six years old. A man raping him. Full of those demons. And then imagine Aaron Hernandez as his last his life went through. I'm sure he at some point in time read the gospel. Because he was a man who read the Bible every now and then. I'm sure that at some point in time he had to turn to Christ and, and seek God to deliver him. And him turn to Jesus Christ and then walk in a ray. And then those demons coming back home to find the house empty, swept, and garnished. Come back with even stronger demons and principalities. It becomes pretty deep. It becomes pretty sad. But it also becomes really real. When you realize that what happened to Aaron Hernandez is simply what happens to a lot of us on a daily basis. The only difference is we haven't murdered anybody. But we go through sins and we go through battles and we go through wickedness on a daily basis that if you don't check it, it's going to lead from one sin to the next sin to the next sin. And Aaron Hernandez had CTE, right? He took a lot of hits in the head when he was doing all of that stuff where playing football, all of those concussions, that, that doesn't, I mean, the CTE that he had was insane. But did you know that you yourself don't even have to play football to get your brain damaged as well by the sins of this world? Porn addiction is proven to damage your brain just as much as cocaine, just as much as crack. In fact, it could even be worse. The effects of pornography on the brain of man the effect of lust on the brain of man. The effects of addiction on the brains of all of us can drive any of us to wicked places, to dark places where there's only one that can deliver you. And that one is Jesus Christ. When you look at the brain of a person who's addicted to pornography, you'll find wickedness condition so we look for someone really smart who could collate scientific data for us which is where dr valerie voon a top neuroscientist at cambridge university enters the frame valerie is a global authority on addiction and what it does to addicts brains in recent years functional mri scanners have allowed scientists to peer inside the brains of those addicted to substances like alcohol, nicotine or cocaine to see how they differ from the rest of us. The focus is on a network of interconnected areas across the brain, the so-called reward network. Here, pleasure is processed and evaluated. At the heart of the network is the ventral striatum, the reward centre. This is where our sense of pleasure is first produced. Food, sex, drugs, it's all registered as delicious, as something we want more of. When shown the focus of their addiction, an alcoholic's reward centre will show an exaggerated response. Their brains crave the drink now, while the rest of us can wait till later. No one has ever scanned the brains of porn users who feel like they are addicted. Even Valerie took some convincing. I wasn't sure what to expect when I first started this study, to be perfectly frank. Mm -hmm. And in part because we just know so little about it. I was quite sceptical and I was a bit ambivalent about the study. After a nationwide search, we found 20 men aged 19 to 34 whose lives were so controlled by porn they were willing to take part in our study. Comfortable. Yeah, they good. didn't want to be identified, but they were prepared to be scanned by Dr. Voon. They'd be compared with a control group of healthy male volunteers. We're running a series of tests using functional MRI to look at brain activity. We're asking whether or not there might be differences in terms of brain activity in specific regions. Are you relaxed? Good to go. OK, we're going to start. We're just having a quick scroll through his brain, making sure that um, everything's where it should be. Like you would do with a boiled egg, just take the top off. The reward networks of the compulsive porn users were lighting up like Christmas trees. Areas involved in anticipating the porn, 
physically responding to the pawn and prioritizing the pawn were all hyperactivated. It's as if these guys' entire reward network is being hijacked by pornography. Absolutely great. Brilliant. And to my immense relief, mine wasn't. Like the healthy volunteers, my response to the pawn was barely visible, whereas the pawn users' brains were going ballistic. The brain is a, f a fascinating machine, really. In terms sure. of brain plasticity, everything that we do each and every day shapes our brain. We call it neuroplastic, just as plastic is changeable and malleable. We can change the shape of the brain. And I actually did a study recently on this. So we put people in the scanner and we looked at their brain structure and associated this brain structure with the amount of pornography they consume. So basically we found in our study that the gray matter in the reward center is generally smaller in those people who watch more porn. We've seen that with multiple addictions from methamphetamine to cocaine, others, and now with pornography addiction. It's almost as if the brain is saying, I like pleasure, but you're killing me, this is too much. My hypothesis was that the ventral striatum and the reward uh, regions should be bigger in those people watching pornography. And it's exactly the other way around, so... Um... Were you shocked? Yes, yes. <laughs> there is solid research to show that uh, brain functioning changes. The more you watch uh, pornography, that you, you can get a, a blip up when the pornography is totally new but totally new soon becomes old as you, as you watch that. People need to watch more or get more interesting and novel stuff to get the same level of activity in the reward system. You know, so it's a paradox. When it starts out, the porn is turning you on, and the more porn you watch, the less likely you are to get aroused. Which seems to indicate that the, the normal, regular thing you were used to isn't sufficient anymore. The wonderful thing about the human mind is the power of curiosity to invent, to create, but what pornography does is it puts a straitjacket on our mind to say, no, this is the only thing I'm interested in, and then ultimately that any kind of compulsion is destructive. And the hard part is, is that these individuals, and we've all been there at one point in time, then you come to Jesus Christ and you say, God, deliver me from this addiction. God, I can't stop thinking about it. God, I can't stop thinking about this. God, I'm addicted to food. I'm addicted to this. I'm addicted to fighting. I'm addicted to unforgiveness. And then... God delivers you and you fall right back again. And now you're dealing with seven times more stronger demons. Aren't you tired of that? The Aaron Hernandez story is right there in this play for you. He ended up killing himself, right? His story is right there for you, for you to see. The only difference is you haven't murdered anybody, right? That's the only difference. But every time his condition got worse and worse and worse, and every time you and my life is getting worse and worse and worse. The scripture said it. The state of the man is worse than the first. But today, you can take action. And today, you can ask God to renew your mind. And today, in Jesus' name, you can remind yourself that the scripture says that with every temptation that comes, there's not one that will come upon your life that you can't overcome. You can overcome every single one of them in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as we're watching this video, we uplift every person who has gone through child abuse, who at a very early age was exposed not only to physical, disgusting, hurtful pain in the physical realm but at such an early age was exposed to a bombardment of demons that is still lingering effects at 20 30 40 50 years old in the name of jesus christ we pray for the families involved with the whole aaron hernandez situation with on both ends his past doesn't justify his sins, just like our past does not justify our sins, because we all have a choice, and that is to turn to you today and repent and allow you to free us. And there are many of you who is trying. There are many of you who try every single day to give your life to Christ, but you just you, all you can think about in your mind is that sin. That's because your brain has been rewired and hijacked by these demons that know how to play with the organisms in your brain and know how to play with the chemicals in your brain because that's how Satan is. That's what witchcraft is. But guess what? God can renew your brain right now in Jesus' name. But do this, though. 
When God sets you free, don't go back out there hunting for that same thing when you don't have the urges anymore. Don't be going out there looking for it, thinking that you can overcome it. Because let me tell you, those demons will come back with seven of their bad buddies and take over. And it won't be a good thing for you. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your deliverance. We renounce pornography. We renounce lust. We renounce drug addiction. We renounce food addiction. We renounce unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All these pedophiles all over the world that are hurting these children, they're some disgusting, nasty human beings, man. They better repent. Because especially you harming a little child, man. God's going to have justice, man. I'm telling you, God's going to have his justice. I pray they repent and get saved and turn to Jesus Christ before God deals his justice. May God bless you and your family. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for praying for me and my family. Thanks for taking a few seconds to share these videos. Next week, the video is going to be completely different. I'm going to be debuting um, a video of me driving and talking to you at the same time. A lot of you have asked for like a face reveal. There you go. It's coming next week. So God bless you. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful, beautiful week.